we use state design pattern in those scenarios where the behavior of the object that is execution of its method changes as the internal state of the object changes so internal state is nothing it is simply the value of instance variables so using state design pattern we can avoid many if else statements and make our code less complicated and easier to maintain take the example of a smart elevator system the lift can be either going up going down or it can be idle and in a smart elevator system suppose an user is on fourth floor and they want to go to eighth floor they press the destination uh, uh, floor 8 now there can be multiple lifts in that elevator system and the elevator system will send this request to all the lifts to find the optimal list and each lift will have the method get time to reach floor once they return this time then the lift which can reach fastest to floor 4 will be chosen the lift which is idle on first floor will take 4 minus 1 that is 3 seconds to reach floor 4 assuming that it takes a lift 1 second to move to next floor upward or in downward direction 1 second let's suppose a lift which is going down what will be the time taken to reach floor for that it will be the sum of first that lift will go all the way down and process all the existing down request and then it will start coming up the total time to reach floor 4 will be sum of both a lift which is going up let's suppose it is on four, floor 2 time taken to reach floor 4 will be 4 minus 2 that is 2 second and let's suppose it was on floor 6 now that lift has already passed floor 4 and it is already going up so it is an invalid lift for that request it will simply return an invalid value like something like minus 1 Let's take a slightly different example of a cab booking system. In a cab booking system, your ride can be in different states like ride requested, ongoing, ride finished, ride cancelled. And consider a common method like time taken to reach destination. If the ride is in cancelled state, then time taken to reach destination will return minus one because it is an invalid value or invalid state for that method. If the ride is already finished. then time taken to reach destination should be zero because your customer or passenger has already reached their destination if the ride is ongoing then time taken to reach destination will be time taken to travel from user's current position till the destination position and if the ride is already requested only when requested then it will be the sum of time taken for driver to arrive starting position plus time taken to go from starting position till destination position there are two ways of doing this first either we put if else methods for each state and write the logic for each state in the same method and another one is use state design pattern for implementing state design pattern you need two things the first one is an either an interface or an abstract class basically a super class which contains all the common behavior that is the common methods in this case i have used the class lift state it contains the common method like update floor which will be called every second or update direction and get direction and the core method which is get time to reach floor using which a lift tells the lift system how much time will it take to start processing a user's request and using those timings the correct lift will be or optimal lift will be chosen for a given request so the first part is your interface or a base class with common features and the second part will be all the state classes which will implement those common features for example in the case of lift we have moving up state moving down state or idle state i could have just had a single class with these methods and used if and else statement for update floor suppose a lift is moving in up direction is on fourth floor so update floor called next second will update it from floor 4 to floor 5 if the lift was moving in down direction then the floor would have become from floor 4 to floor 3 and if it was in idle state then it would have remained at floor 4 either i could have three if else statements or i did it using a separate state same update direction if a lift is moving up and it has reached the topmost position where it has fulfilled all the up request if it has no request then it will become idle and if it has down request then direction will change to d that is down same goes for vice versa for moving down state if a lift is coming down and it has processed all the down request then if it has no other request then it will become idle if it has up request in its queue then it will start moving up and the direction becomes u that is up 
again the get direction and the get time to reach floor which we already discussed instead of using if else statements we wrote the logic for different states in different classes the benefit of using this approach is that if a new state comes then we can simply have a, a separate class for it and we do not need to disturb the code for all different states it becomes easier to maintain in the long run coming to our question design a elevator management system with multiple lifts we do not need to actually solve this question we just want to show you the how to use the state design pattern in this question elevator management system has a class lift every lift will have a current floor then it will have a list of requests basically in a smart elevator system the user press sun button or the destination floor so request will be known in advance or they will be assigned in advance for a given lift then there are state variables moving up moving down idle and the state this state variable keeps the current state of the lift so lift is our client class which uses all the lift states then we already saw the common behavior or the common methods for the lift state which is an abstract class the methods are update floor update direction get direction and the core method which is get time to reach floor and then we have the state classes which provide implementation for these methods moving up state moving down and idle state starting with the idle state as you can see the logic for uh, get direction returns i then get time to reach floor has a separate logic and we haven't implemented two methods and their default implementation is enough for idle update floor and update direction does nothing since the state is idle then we have the moving down state it has its own logic for get time to reach floor you do not need to understand this logic for now use it when you are attempting this question and it has separate logic for actually updating floor and updating the direction and get direction also returns d so the logic for common methods is different here same if you go for the moving up state it has a separate logic for get time to reach floor depending on the floor and the direction and the update floor and update direction and get direction also work differently get direction returns u in this case what we could have done is we could have a separate class but in that case the logic for all the get time to reach floor all this code plus the get time to reach floor method in down direction moving down state plus the get time to reach floor in idle state all this would have been a single method and that would have been pretty complex also if you were to add a new state then we have to put more code inside that large method it would have been complex to maintain it using a state design pattern was a better choice here and all this pattern and the common classes and state classes are used by our lift class if you want to remember or take away just one thing about a state design pattern then remember that whenever an object is changing its behavior when its internal state is changing that is whenever the execution of its methods is changing whenever the value of its instance variables is changing then we use a state design pattern and we will are able to avoid too many if else statements this was all about state design pattern i have created a plan to prepare for low level design interviews you can access it on codegym.com/roadmap this is a seven day plan there are short videos on the most important topics and daily practice questions so it will give you a decent level of preparation within seven days i created this plan because most of the time when interviews are scheduled there is very less time either the interviews are on this week or in the next week most candidates are a bit confused because there is a lot of content on the internet and lots of youtube so do, do not know which topics to read first or which youtube videos to see and learn from and which questions to practice most importantly time is of essence this plan has everything easy to hard questions and most important questions first videos on most important topics first give it a try it will give you a decent level of progression within 7 days and thanks for watching the video Wish you the best of luck. Bye.